Um, but a colleague and I implemented the SHA-256 circuit in Zikaboo, and that showed us really lots of overlap between the MPC prover and the ZK SNARK prover, and lots of ways in which they're complementary as well. So this talk will be a high level overview of um, these three ways in which um, MPC and ZK SNARKs kind of cross over. So the shape of a ZK SNARK is as such, um, it produces uh, a, a proof that is efficiently and publicly verifiable. Um, and besides revealing the validity of the witness, it reveals no other information about this witness. Something that might be inconvenient about a ZK snark is that a single prover needs to know the whole witness and carry out the whole proving process. So, whereas an MPC we can already see has um, naturally kind of complementary features. So, um, in an MPC, the input to the computation is split across multiple parties. But um, there isn't an inbuilt way to verify that um, all nodes were honest. So, if all nodes in an MPC collude, there isn't an inbuilt way to publicly audit this. So if we want, this, this implies that if we want a scheme that is at the same time um, multi-prover, uh, friendly to multi the multi-prover setting, and efficiently and publicly verifiable, then um, we would do well to combine aspects from both ZK SNARK and MPC provers. So the first sort of combination, the first flavor, is tr adding auditability, pu public auditability, to the MPC prover. And um, these are some of the papers um, who have worked on p publicly auditable MPC. And they've cited the following use cases, whereby it is of public interest that the MPC computation was done completely honestly. Um, so yeah, this, this idea of publicly auditable MPC originated in 2014. And at first, um, it required s sort of the, the reading of the whole computation, the, the whole computation transcript. So it was a linear time and not efficiently verifiable. But in 2017, someone figured out a way to apply the ZK SNARK Pinocchio to an MPC protocol using the commit and proof technique. Um, and this produced um, a constant size proof. Um, which is a way better, a way more efficient, uh, efficiently verifiable proof. The downside to Pinocchio is that it required a circuit specific setup. So for each MPC protocol or for each alteration to an existing protocol, um, we would need to redo a costly um, setup process. So in 2021, um, a group adapt, uh, replaced the Pinocchio ZK SNARK with the Marlin ZK SNARK. And um, Marlin basically has no need for a circuit specific setup and only requires a universal reference string that can be reused for um, arbitrary logic. So the second flavor um, of this crossover is um, making the ZK SNARK prover friendly uh, to the multi-prover context. And the, the subtlety here is that there's actually two variants um, of multi-party ZK SNARK proving. The first is the delegated ZK SNARK, whereby a single party um, secret shares their witnesses to multiple workers. And usually, um, these workers 
have lots of computational resources um, and can work in parallel. Um, so basically it's an outsourced computation. The second variant is a collaborative ZK snark where no single party has the full witness. Um, yeah, and instead, um, this is basically an MPC um, that produces a ZK snark at the end. And concretely, the difference between these two variants is that in the former, you can assume an honest delegator, um, whereas in the latter, you, you cannot assume this, and you have to compensate by um, using a costly pre-processing stage. So some motivations for delegated proving include um, moving, um, moving costly computations off of resource-constrained environments such as blockchains, um, outsourcing proofs for large circuits, like circuit-unfriendly primitives, um, or large circuits like private input machine learning. So, um, yeah, the, a recent work um, proposed that, um, EOS, efficient outsourcing of SNARKs, I think. Um, and once again, they used the Marlin ZK SNARK as a um, case study. So in this work, they assumed an, an honest delegator, um, and w which stays online during the computation and participates in the computation. And they showed that um, for large instances, um, that this delegated proving is faster than the single prover case. Um, a later work, ZK Snarks as a Service, um, improved on this. And it, they also um, showed um, Marlin as a case study, among other proof systems. Um, imp improved on this setup um, by introducing a primitive called packed secret sharing. So basically they noticed um, some SIMD structure, some, some vector or parallelizable structure in the computations of the ZK SNARK prover. And they were able to further reduce the work done by each of the workers, such that um, overall each worker was doing basically one over L of the work, where, where L is the number of workers. Um, so they also don't require the client to stay online. Um, after secret sharing the witness, the client can just step away entirely. Um, but one little quirk about um, this work was that for the FFT, the fast Fourier transform operation specifically, they required they have this asymmetric requirement of one large server. So to give you just a sneak peek into the structure of the typical ZK snark, um, so it consists of three building blocks. Um, the first is the arithmetization and this will happen before, um, before the delegation step. So this is when um, the computation is encoded as some al algebraic constraint satisfaction problem that can be efficiently probabilistically checked. The second step is a polynomial interactive oracle proof. And what this does is yeah, it checks this problem. Um, and this is a purely idealized and information theoretic protocol, whereby um, the prover's interactions with the verifier are modeled as oracles, uh, polynomial oracles and queries. And the final step is actually instantiating this idealized IOP um, through the use of um, a commitment scheme and the introduction of cryptographic 
assumptions, such as discrete log hardness or the existence of a one-way function. And so Marlin uses um, exactly these three ingredients. Um, it uses the R1CS um, arithmetization. And I will not go through this because I have only 15 minutes. How long do I have left, actually? Six minutes on the clock. I have six minutes left, yeah. So, yeah, Marlin has precisely these three ingredients. It uses the rank one constraint system as its arithmetization. And once again, this is the witness generation step that takes place before the delegation, before the secret sharing. Um, step two is the information theoretic polynomial IOP. And Marlin has a sum check based protocol. And this is the part where you have to do many field operations, such as FFTs, inverse FFTs, and um, polynomial multiplications and divisions. So this has to be secret shared, these operations. And the last step is the cryptographic um, polynomial commitment scheme. And Marlin uses um, the KZG protocol. So the dominant cost of the KZG protocol is multi-scalar multiplications. So these are elliptic curve operations. Um, and these also have to be secret shared. So these are the expensive parts of the Marlin ZK Snark Prover that we are trying to delegate um, to, to the workers. So the other flavor of multi-prover ZK Snarks is distributed proving, also known as collaborative proving. And once again, this is different from delegated proving because no single party holds the witness, the full witness at any one time. So some motivations for distributed proving. Um, basically, um, any situation where you're trying to compute some kind of global property, some kind of aggregate, for example, um, and you need the input from many institutions. This is basically an MPC protocol that produces a ZK snark. Um, and recently, there's been lots of interest in distributed proving because of um, the problem of MEV, or maximally extractable value, in, in the blockchain world. So, I think Ostemir and Bonet in 2022 um, were the first to experiment with collaborative ZK snarks. And one of their main contributions was noticing that you could directly secret share elliptic curve operations. Um, and this really unlocked um, the multiscalar multiplications um, that we saw earlier. Um, and a later, a later work, well, in the same year, actually, um, took a slightly different approach, um, where, whereby they introduced a generic compiler for any IOP to take it to a so-called homomorphic IOP um, that's suitable for a distributed proof generation. So I haven't actually compared these two works properly because what, they don't reference each other. And um, their benchmarks are also, they benchmark different proof systems. So I think it would be interesting to try and compare them more meaningfully. But yeah, I think um, I'm going to skip over MPC in the head, actually, because as I mentioned, it's not MPC and it's also not ZK Snark. Um, but it does make for an efficient zero-knowledge proof um, if you don't care about proof size that much. Um, so I'm going to end up with some directions for exploration. So I think sort of these two directions. The first one is um, figuring out which ZK proofs are MPC friendly. Um, and the second is figuring out how 
um, to make MPC permit uh, how to how to make um, efficient MPC versions of common zk primitives. So in the first direction, we might want to look for proofs that involve fewer rounds of communication and fewer expensive operations like multiplications, elliptic curve operations, and FFTs. And these proof systems do exist. Um, and in the other direction, we already saw examples of um, new MPC primitives like elliptic curve circuits and packed secret sharing, as well as the one large server optimization for the fast Fourier transform. And um, sort of vague, these two last points, but I think these papers that I've cited are really new, and to better compare them, um, we should make an effort to benchmark them and also try to systematize all the variety of settings and assumptions that they make. So yeah, I think that's all I have. Thank you.